Welcome to Bites Bread and Barbecue. Thanks for meeting me here in the Matrix today. What we're going to discuss is rehabbing old computers to breathe life into them. I have a lot of people ask me how I can convert an old computer I have to have sitting around into something more useful rather than just tossing it away. To do this, you're going to need three things. You're going to need a working computer to download the computer image we're going to use. You're going to need a flash drive to put the new operating system on, and you're going to need an old computer to rehab. So what we're going to do is, the, my favorite lightweight operating system to install on old computers is actually a form of Linux Mint. I'll put all these links in the area below. Cinnamon is their flagship edition that's made for current computers, not what we're after. What we're after is this XFCE edition, which is light, simple, and efficient. It'll run on old computers. I recently put this on an Athlon 2, which is a circa 2005 chip that was in a computer purchased in 2009 that shipped with Windows XP. The user had updated to Windows 10 and it was running as slow as molasses. So what we did is we put this interface on and I will actually show you a video of that computer later in this video. So you're gonna click on the download page, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, you're gonna pick somewhere that's closest to you, and you're gonna download what is called an ISO file to your working computer. This ISO file is essentially the image of a computer hard drive that we're going to load onto that empty flash drive that you set aside. And it should be at least eight gigabytes. Um, so once you've downloaded that file on your good computer, you're gonna click on installation guide, and here is the installation guide. And if you go over to the side and you click on create bootable media, it tells you how to make that blank flash drive you have bootable with the new ISO. And this is what we're gonna to use to format the old computer. Now I want you to follow these instructions and please use free software, don't pay for anything. Once you have followed these instructions and you have your flash drive all ready to go, eject it from your good computer, and then we can go to the old computer. The first thing you're gonna do there is, we're gonna check the BIOS boot order. In order to use this stick to install to the computer, the computer, when you turn it on, has to look to that US flash drive first. And the way you determine that is the BIOS boot order. The BIOS is a middleman that talks from the operating system to the chips in the computer. This is actually burned to the chips in your computer, so it is always there. Don't mess with anything in here except the boot order. You're going to go in and you're going to move the USB flash drive to the top of the order and then you're going to reboot the machine with the flash drive in the USB port and the computer will boot from that USB flash drive you made. Okay, now I don't have an old computer to um, run on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual computer here and we're going to just call this, um, since I already have one installed, we're gonna call this two, and I'm gonna tell it that I'm gonna install a Linux computer, and we're gonna continue on. Now what I am gonna show you is that this is, I'm gonna make it have two gigabytes of RAM. This would be very familiar to a computer that was built in 2009, and we're gonna continue on. Now you won't have to do any of this because you're booting from a flash drive. I'm doing this because it's a fictitious computer. What I'm also gonna show you is we're gonna emulate a um, computer from 2009. We have um, in an Athlon 2 that would have been about that vintage, it's a dual core or two CPUs. Now I have a fairly modern computer. You can see that mine has 16 CPUs. What that means is that there are 16 brains on the main processing chip. In 2009, they only had two. So we're gonna to try to mimic that. We're gonna set it to that and it's setting that. Okay, so you won't have to do any of those things because you're actually working with hardware. But what I was trying to prove is that I am making this as much as I can like a 2009 computer. So I'm gonna kick off my computer. I'm gonna turn it on and the, it's gonna say, here is your ISO file. You won't have to do that either because you're gonna boot from a flash drive. But from now on, things are gonna look pretty similar. What happens here, and I'm going to make this so that it is scaled. So just so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so we booted into a text message menu that comes up and it 
um, tells you that it's going to start Linux from your flash drive for the very first time. So here we go. And your computer is going to look very much like this um, when you boot from that flash drive. Um, it's going to come up with a very familiar looking interface. This looks a lot like Windows 7. You have a start button here and potentially you could run this computer just from the flash drive, but it's difficult to save files and store data this way. You can do it, but it, it's not intuitive. What we want to do is this, what looks like a CD-ROM here. We want to double click that and that's going to move the software to the internal hard drive in your computer. I speak English, so I'm going to continue with English and I use a US keyboard, so I'm going to continue with that. Now, it's going to ask you whether you want to install multimedia codecs. You do want to do that because you want to watch Netflix, you want to listen to Spotify, you want to um, watch YouTube videos. So go ahead and click continue. And it's going to take a few minutes for it to do this because it's got to reach out to the internet and grab those codexes. So it's going out there and it's looking for them right now. Um, and it should take a minute or two and we should be back in business. Okay, now what this is telling you here is that it is going to erase the hard drive on the computer. So if there's anything on that computer that you need to get off of there before it is totally erased, you've got to do it now. Because after this point, everything on that hard drive in your old computer is gone. It is completely gone and cannot be retrieved. So and now I'm doing this on a fictitious install. I would click install but it takes 15 to 20 minutes to install. Don't get alarmed if it takes that long. And please remember on older computers, you're using USB one. So it's gonna be a very slow process from your flash drive. Um, and it also depends on your internet connection. So I'm actually gonna quit here because I already have this installed in another instance. And I'm going to shut this particular instance down. Okay, now it will prompt you when you finish installing, just like it's prompting me now, to remove the installation media. That means that when you get to this screen, you're gonna pull the USB drive out of the computer because the next time you want it to boot from the hard drive. And I'm gonna hit enter and that computer goes away. Now, I already have a full install of, Windows, or of uh, Linux XFCE running here. We're going to See if we can get it. There it is. All right, and my password here. Uh, if only I could type. Okay, so after you install it, I did change the background. It's a simple thing like most computers. You just go to desktop settings and it'll come up with a bunch of photos here that are built in that you can change to any of those. Um, I'm going to exit out of that. I just like the Sydney Opera House, so I picked that. So let's take a look at what we have after we installed this. This is what um, the, um, the whole process is going to look like um, once you have it booted from the hard drive. And you'll see down here that it pre-installs Firefox um, onto the, the computer, and you can see that it's pretty snappy. Now remember, I have this set as if it's a computer from 2009. Say that I wanna just, not my favorite site, but say that we wanna get one that has a lot of pictures and photos and everything. You'll see that it was pretty quick um, for that time, and, and I'm running this virtually. I'm not running it, um, I'm not running it um, uh, on, a, on a regular hard drive. So and the other thing that I wanted to show you is that things that you can do here, you can go into an option called display and you can pick your screen resolution. Right now it's running at 800 by 600. As you can see, I can drop that down and make it any resolution that I want, uh, just like you would any other computer. You can also go into something called appearance um, and appearance will allow you to go in and change. Um, say that you wanted to do, let's find a dark theme here. Um, this is a very popular thing to do now. Windows is lacking in this, but Mac and Linux are all over this where you can change from a light to a dark theme. Uh, you can also go in here and you can select different groups of icons if you want it to look differently. On the video I'm going to show you, I actually am using one that's called uh, Candy Coat, I think. Um, and then you can change all of your settings for appearance in here. The other nice thing about Linux um, Mint is that it ships, ships with a um, Office Suite. Um, this is LibreOffice. It's an open source 
that will run on Linux, Mac, or Windows. Um, and it reads and writes Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, and uh, it gives you a whole series of other things. They also have a database now. I've not tried that, but I assume it reads and writes for access. Um, my son used this all the way through college and submitted his paper in the Word format that he wrote here. But let's pull up the, the Word processor and you can see it looks like Word. Now, it does default to its own file format, which I think is an ODF, which is an open desk file format or something like that. But what you would do is you would go in and you would save as and you're actually or export as. Um, but you can you can save it into a Microsoft um, file format that is Word compatible. Um, and that all ships and is free. So the other thing I want to point out is there's a little shield here. This shield has an orange button next to it. That means that there are updates from Linux Mint that need to be made to the operating system. And since this is a first time install, that process is probably gonna be 15 minutes to bring it completely up to speed. But what'll happen is you'll see that little orange dot maybe once a week on the bottom of your computer um, telling you that you have some update to download and you'll update your Linux software. And after the first time, it usually takes about 30 seconds or so. Um, and that's what Linux Mint looks like after the install to an older computer. Now, what I want to show you is I'm going to shut this down and we're going to close out of that. Uh, I do want to show you, I have an actual video. This video that's going to play is from the computer that I rehabbed. And what you're going to see is actual live time speed casting from that computer. Now this was a 2009 Athlon 2 um, that I put Linux Mint XFCE on. I did use something called a vampire theme with candy icons. So let us just take a look here. What you'll notice right off with that was that I did install a dock at the bottom um, to make it look more like a Mac and I also installed Spotify, Google Chrome that are easily installed and the Linux format has an app store much like your smartphone does. All the software is free. If you have an Android phone, Android is a form of Linux and it'll sync up with your computer seamlessly. Um, if you have an Apple phone, not so much. There are ways to bring music over and things like that, and you can run uh, Apple Music from the web browser, but to like sync up like iTunes does, that's really not too possible. There are some ways you can try to work around it, but it's very difficult to do, and I've never been successful at it. But if you have an Android phone, you can even sync up to the point that you can text from your computer um, directly. And that's about all. Uh, thanks. Please leave some comments. Uh, if this has been helpful or not, uh, it'll help me decide whether to make more. Thanks. Bye.